We're currently going through both a health crisis and an economic crisis with a lot of people losing their jobs, people taking pay cuts, and also a lot of uncertainty around people's jobs, business incomes, etc. And so I wanted to talk in this video about the things that I'm doing during this financial crisis to both survive it and to protect myself and my family financially, but also to grow through this time and actually try and thrive through this time so when we get to the end of this, because it will end eventually, that I'm actually in a better financial position than when we started. So I'm trying to use this as an opportunity and hopefully some of these ideas that I share with you will actually help spark ideas in you of things that you can do to survive this time and actually thrive in this time and end up in a better financial position. Hey, I'm Ryan from On Property, helping you achieve financial freedom. And you know, we, we couldn't really see this coming. Obviously, we didn't predict a global pandemic, but I have been thinking about a looming recession for some time. Started recording videos about a year ago, talking about how to prepare for a recession, what happens to property during recessions. So I'll link up to those down below. So I've kind of been thinking about this and preparing for this, but it happened faster than I anticipated and faster than I wanted. I was not completely prepared for this and set up to survive this. I'm in a similar position to a lot of you out there and that's okay, panic stations, what do I need to do to set myself up that I can foreseeably make it through this without running out of money. So how am I doing that? Well, the first thing that I'm doing is cutting my expenses to the bone. I'm currently living at home, so moved back in with my parents. That actually happened to me a few months ago. I was renting, the owner wanted to move back into that place, just so happened to be around the time that is the slowest for my business. So Christmas time, January, February, tends to be my slowest months of the year. So I thought, the owners wanna move back in around the start of December, I'll move out back home for a couple of months, and then when business picks up again, I will move out. Little did I know that in February and March, the whole world would be thrown upside down. So rent is obviously a major expense that most of you will be paying or a mortgage. And so I was actually able to cut that out of my life already. And I know that's a really hard step for a lot of people. People don't wanna lose their homes. Living at home with your parents is not ideal, obviously, but I had taken those steps already, swallowed my ego, swallowed my pride in order to set myself up financially, get on top of my debts, get on top of my cash flow anyway that I've cut that out. The next biggest expense in my life was private schooling for my kids. So my kids were going to a Montessori school, which we absolutely loved. But when I saw that this was going to get serious a couple of weeks ago, I made the decision with my ex-partner, Kelly, the kid's mum, that we would actually pull them out of school and enroll them in a public school to remove those fees because it's not feasible for me to pay it. I could see that my business was gonna go into a downturn and cash flow would be tight and I just can't afford it. And so unfortunately, we've had to make that decision quite quickly, but because we could see where this was going, we were able to make that decision quickly uh, and enroll in the new government school and withdraw them from the private school to save on that expense. So really kind of cutting my expenses there, not going out for coffee anymore, not eating out food, making food at home, which kind of sucks because I'm not a good cook. And I understand that all of this and what I'm doing is not helping the economy because you know I'm just saving all my money. But when it comes down to it, I do need to prepare for myself and I need to prepare for my family as to what's going to happen. So I am cutting my expenses to the bone. That's the first thing because that means any money that I make that I can save, it gives me a more and more buffer. So if my income drops to zero, maybe I've got two months buffer, but because I've cut my expenses to you know as little as possible and I'm still making money at the moment, then it builds up that buffer from two months to three months to four months to six months that I can reasonably survive without much income. So that's the first thing I'm doing is cutting my expenses to the bone. It's kind of lucky at the moment because it's it's cool to stay home and it's cool to save money because everyone's social socially isolating anyway. There's not much reason to go out and because of the health risks, there's not much reason to go out spending money on lavish things and on dinners out and stuff like that. The next thing that I'm doing, which I feel is really important, is doubling down on my business. 
Now my business has taken a downturn. One of my major websites that I've been working very heavily on for the last six months took about a 50% hit, which is really unfortunate because I've been doing all of this work preparing that, okay, a recession is coming. I want to set up this passive income and then got hit with a Google update as well as adjustments in what people are searching for and in consumer habits because of what's happening in the world right now. So that actually took about a 50% hit, which means the passive income that's coming from that is also hit by about 50%. But I'm in a really fortunate position in that I do still have some passive income from that. So I've got that business, I've got this one on property where I work with the buyer's agent, Ben Everingham from Pumped On Property, um, and then I've got a cafe job as well. So I've got multiple sources of income, which is one of the ways I wanted to prepare for this recession. Unfortunately, my most passive income has taken a hit, but what I'm doing now is actually doubling down on that. So the last six months, I've been working really hard on that website to grow the passive income. I realized that I wasn't really targeting the right keywords. It's kind of taken me six months to work out a winning formula as to what articles can I rank quickly with and make money with. I kind of worked that out in February and I'm having good results from the articles I wrote in February. And so I know that I have a formula that works now. It's not going to work as well because of what's happening, because people aren't spending as much money but it's still going to work. So what I'm doing now is completely doubling down on that, writing as many articles as possible. I was previously writing about one per day, now trying to up that to about three to four per day. So I'm doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on that to grow my passive income through this. That's not gonna help me this month. It's not gonna help me next month because those articles take time to rank. But remember, I've got a buffer of a few months there. And so ideally, if my buffer runs out, then in a few months time, the work that I'm doing today will start to be paying me. And so I'm doubling down on that, I'm going to be doubling down on, on property as well to give you more information and to help you. And then that obviously supports my income as well. So doubling down on business and using a lot more of my free time to work. My partner is getting annoyed at me for setting my alarm super early in the morning to get up and work because it wakes her up as well. But that's something that I'm doing, getting up at six, getting up at 6.30 to get articles written before the rest of the world has even started their day. I'm also looking at ways to find external income sources. This is not something that I've actually started implementing yet, but I currently work in a cafe, which is my immediate income source. So I work on the business that takes time to earn money. The cafe I work, I get paid that week. So I'm exploring other income sources for that. I'm a writer. I'm very good at writing content. So I'm exploring the idea of doing freelance writing for people or doing SEO for other businesses out there or blog content for them or social media content for businesses as well. So if you have a business, if you're looking for someone who knows how to write good articles, then hit me up, leave a comment in the description down below or email me ryan at ryanmcclain.net or ryan at onproperty.com.au is probably easier to remember uh, if you need a writer and if you want to hire me because that's some um, extra income that's coming in that if lockdown does happen and I can't earn money at the cafe anymore or business doesn't grow as quickly as possible, I've got these multiple income streams. So I'm looking for ways to use my talents and use my skills to get extra income coming in because at the moment it's like income is, is life. And so any income you can get given the uncertainty is money that I can squirrel away to have more of a buffer fund to make it through this because really this isn't going to last forever. It might be six months, 12 months, 18 months, two years, who knows, but it's not going to last forever. And so basically it's about surviving this and also buying myself time to work and grow my business. So as we come out of this, my business is set up and primed for success at the end of that. So I'm looking to find external income sources as well. That's something that I'm still working on. Um, I've also got the plan in place to freeze my debts if I need to. I haven't actually implemented that yet and I know some people have implemented that who have already lost their jobs, that they're able to freeze their mortgage for six months and just let it accumulate. I haven't actually taken that step yet because I've still got enough income coming in that I want to continue to pay off my debts. It may not be the best use of my funds because 
Maybe I should be squirreling it away for the future, but I feel confident in my ability to make enough money to get by and still pay off my debts. But I have that plan in place if I need to act on it. And so that's something that's there in the background as an emergency if I need to go ahead and do that. Um, and then that's the last thing is having a backup, backup plan and having backup plans for your backup plans. And so really, I'm kind of in the position now where I've really cut the major expenses out of my life. I am working on the business, still working in the cafe, trying to earn external income. This is kind of my plan at the moment. What is my backup backup plan if all of that fails? If I lose my job, if my business completely crash and go to zero, what is my backup backup plan? You know, what is my worst case scenario plan? And to be honest with you, I don't have one yet. And I'm hoping that it doesn't get to that point where, you know, I've completely run out of money and my income's gone to zero. I guess backup backup plan would then be Centrelink while I look for jobs. And so I don't think it's going to get to that because I think I've got enough passive income from my business, even though it's taken a hit, that I could get through it without requiring government assistance. But who knows, it may come to that point. I may need that to get through this time just to make sure really that my kids have a roof over their heads, that my kids have food on the table that they can eat. I have stocked up on um, perishable foods so that you know, backup, backup plan, worst case scenario, there's no income coming in. We've got food there. It's not necessarily the best food, but you know, there's canned food, there's spaghetti, there's canned fruit and stuff like that as well, that we'd be able to see ourselves through a couple of months or however long that food will last, maybe probably not a couple of months. But yeah, so that's what I'm doing in this financial crisis. It all sounds really dire and all sounds really extreme, but I'm actually really excited about this opportunity as well to really double down on everything. And even though I'm preparing for the worst, I've cut my expenses to the bone, I'm living with my parents, my kids are out of private school, I've got food stored and spending as little on food and coffee as possible. Even though that's happening, I'm actually working really hard on my business to grow my income through this period. I feel like I've got a winning formula with my websites, which has taken me six to 12 months to get to this point. And I feel like this is actually an opportunity where the whole world is on standstill. No one's expecting me to spend money. So I can actually not spend money, which actually buys me time to work on my business and grow my income more. So for me, this is actually an opportunity. And I encourage you to look at the opportunity in this. When there are recessions, when these things happen, there's so many opportunities that pop up in the market. New problems exist that never existed before that need solving. And if you can solve those problems, then there's opportunities to make money as a result of that. So rather than just looking at, okay, I lost my job as a flight attendant and I can no longer get a job as a flight attendant, Look at other skills that you have in your life. Look at the problems out there to be solved, whether that be starting a business or trying to get a job, but look at what are the opportunities out there? What problems do people need solved? Because people are still spending money. They might not be spending as much. They might not be spending it on the same things, but people are still spending money. The economy is still going and there's still opportunities out there. So I encourage you to seek out those opportunities to earn as much money as you can to survive through this, but also to thrive through this and hopefully get to the end of it with a better outcome than when it started. So I hope that this gives you some ideas. I hope that this encourages you. I'll leave the links down below to the other videos that I've done on what to do during a recession or how to plan for a recession. So I'll link up to those down below. Go ahead and check them out. Otherwise, until next time, stay positive.